Well, thanks for joining us wherever you may be. So glad you're with us today. We, bring, we begin a brand new series uh, called Integrity, uh, What's Behind the Mask. I don't have my mask with me today, but we're going to have a little fun with this since we're all wearing masks. But over the next four weeks, really hoping that you're going to learn what it what it means to live with integrity. Before we jump into that, I just wanna give you a live streaming update. Uh, we met with our consultant this week, Wes Collinsworth, and finalized the plan, so all the equipment is on order right now. That's where that stands. Excited about the month of November. We're just gonna bless our community. Uh, we're gonna provide 90 Thanksgiving meals for families. Last year we did 80, the year before 50, so we're almost up 100%. We're gonna bless children with coats and boots and then we're just gonna stockpile our food pantry so we can feed as many families as possible the need always grows in November and December so just looking forward to blessing our community well I absolutely love the fall do you you know with the fall it comes the crisp cool air football one of my favorite sports campfires uh, in the background the beautiful changing leaves and of course the holiday Halloween now I know Halloween brings up different ideas and thoughts for a lot of people but we can all agree that Halloween is the one holiday where people actually open their front doors to complete strangers which I think is a good thing and also it's one night when we can pretend to be someone else than we are. I remember as a kid, I would love to figure out each Halloween who I was going to be for Halloween. My best was the hunchback of Notre Dame. I had a wig, I had this makeup, had this awesome costume. I put a pillow in my back so I had the big hunch and I, I walked around my, my neighborhood my, my neighborhood like this and I got this really good hunchback face. Here, here it goes right here. It was like this. Yeah, that's, that, that's how every door I went to. I just kept that up the whole night. Absolutely amazing. So our tradition was we would get back to the house. We would carve the pumpkins. Uh, we would count all of our candy. And then we would watch one of our favorite cartoons ever. It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. So I do not tr uh, trick or treat anymore. That would just be creepy. I'm an old guy now. But I still, every Halloween, I watch this cartoon because I absolutely love it. And in the cartoon, we all know Lucy, right? Lucy Van, Pe Van Pelt. She says this, A person should always choose a costume which is in direct contrast to her own personality. Now that's funny because if you know Lucy, she's one of the crankiest, meanest girls ever. And so do you remember what costume that she picked to wear in direct contrast to her personality? It was a witch, okay, <laughs> which is totally hilarious because Lucy, that was more like spot on, okay? That was not in contrast to your personality. But what costumes and masks I think remind us of is what we all have done in our lives, and that's pretend to be someone that we're not, to do and to say things that really aren't true uh, to who we really are. And so integrity is a direct opposite of that. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say or do. And that's what integrity is. So I really want to talk to you in this series about the value of living with integrity. And so here is going to be our memory verse for the month. So even if you're at home, I want you to stand up wherever you are right now. Just shake it out. Stand up in honor of reading God's word. And let's read this verse together. And let's try to memorize this verse this month. And I want, want you to know this too. Our children are starting back up in Children's Church this month, uh, this Sunday, in fact, and they are studying and learning the exact same things that we are learning. So together, as a whole church family, from the oldest to the youngest, we are learning about integrity this month, so you can talk to your kids if they come to Children's Church about what you learned in Big Church and see, hey, if it's the same thing or not. But let's say this together. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely. But anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Let's say it one more time out loud. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Now, we live in a culture and we live in a society where the outward appearance means everything. 
Image is king in the United States of America. It's what you look like, it's what you wear, how much money you have, the kind of car you're driving, the kind of house you live in, who you hang out with. That outward image is absolutely everything. But that is not what God cares about. What God cares about is not the outside appearance, but he cares about your heart. He cares about what is on the inside of you. And what this verse teaches us is, is if we have a pure heart, it's going to bring safety into our life. But if we have a crooked heart, it's going to bring trouble. And today, we're going to learn about Daniel, Daniel chapter 1, a young man who had great integrity. And because he chose to live with integrity, God brought safety into his life and really protected him in a very dangerous situation. So Daniel was known for his integrity long before, you know, Daniel and the lion's den. We all know the lion's den story. But long before that, when Daniel was just a young man, he lived in Judah. And this was where God's people lived. But God's people weren't honoring God and they weren't worshiping God. So Babylon comes in and King Nebuchadnezzar comes in into Judah and just overtakes Judah. And King Nebuchadnezzar, he didn't have any respect for God or God's people. In fact, he went into God's temple and he took these very valuable items and he moved them back to his temple. And then this is what he also said, I wanna take the finest young men from Judah and take them back to Babylon and for three years, we're gonna basically indoctrinate them into Babylonian culture. We're going to remove the Jewish culture from them and put in the Babylonian culture. And so his main servant was this guy, okay? Ashpenaz, all right? Ashpenaz, that's a hard name to say. Ashpenaz was his main servant. So he instructs Ashpenaz to to take these young men and to train them for three years. So One of the first things that he does is he gives them Babylonian names, all right? So we see this in verse 7. The chief official, who was Ashpenaz, gave them new names, all right? To Daniel, the name Belteshazzar. I just think they liked hard names, okay? Belteshazzar. To Hananiah, Shadrach. To Mishael, Meshach. And to Azariah, Abednego. Praise God, I got through that. So They give them new names, then they start teaching them the language and then all the customs and all the culture, and they go as far to changing their diet. Now, that may not seem like a big deal to you, but to the Jewish people, it was very important what they ate. They could honor God with what they ate or they could dishonor God with what they ate. And so they asked Daniel and his friends to start eating food that would dishonor God. And Daniel's response to this, his mantra, this was his mantra. You can just say it out loud if you want, but give us veggies. This was his mantra, give us veggies. I would have said like, give us cheeseburgers, give us french fries and ketchup, give us pizza, what would you say? But it would not be give us veggies. But Daniel said, give us veggies and water, you know, to drink and to eat, because I don't want to dishonor God by eating this royal food. But the official told Daniel, I'm afraid. I'm I'm afraid of my lord, the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, who has assigned you food and drink. He's telling you what to eat and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head. They didn't play games back then. If you disobeyed the king, whoo, chop off of the head. He'll have my head because of you. So this was, you know, a challenge to Daniel. But Daniel didn't give up. He didn't give up on his convictions, didn't give up on living with integrity. So he goes to the guard that is in charge of them. And you know how you get a guard. You you say, test me, right? Test me. Challenge the guard. That works with the guards. So he says, please test your servants for 10 days. Just 10 days, guard. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and trick or treat your servants in accordance with what you see. No, it it really doesn't say that. It says, and treat your servants in accordance with 
what you see. So the guard goes along with this. And for 10 days, he lets Daniel and his friends eat vegetables and water. And wouldn't you know it, after that, they look better than all of the other young men. Maybe some of us should try to eat some vegetables and water. It might be good for us. And then after three years, Aspenaz, again, takes Daniel and his three friends in front of the king to get tested. And the king starts asking all these questions, and they get put to the test. And here's what the Bible tells us. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole entire kingdom. So because Daniel chose integrity, God protected Daniel and his friends. And God gave Daniel and his friends greater understanding and greater knowledge. He could even understand dreams and interpret dreams. And because of this, in a very dangerous situation, Daniel and his friends were able to walk safely. So what does this mean for us today? This is what I think it means, that we can be known for our integrity too. Well, how, Pastor Dan? Eat vegetables? No, not, not eat vegetables. I think this is the secret right here. To be truthful with your whole life. The word integrity uh, comes from the word integer. And if you remember math class, integer is a whole number. It can't be divided or separated. It's a whole number. We also get the word integration from integer or integrity. And integration just says, hey, we're all different, right? We think differently. We see things differently. We have different color skin. We, have, we come from different backgrounds. We may vote differently uh, in the election. We have you know, just different ideas, so different in so many ways, but integration says, hey, although we're very different and we can keep our differences, we all belong to one family. You know, we are all a part of one family. And what we tend to do is the direct opposite of that. We, we segregate or, or we segment, we separate, and we say, hey, my life isn't whole, but I have this part of my life over here. It's my work life. And then I have my social life over here. And, and then I'm a segment. I have my church life. And then I have my sex life. And then I have my private life. And we have all these segments or compartments to our life. And when we do that, we make it impossible to live with integrity because it's the direct opposite of what integrity is. Integrity is saying, hey, we're whole, we're together, we belong. It's not compartmentalized. It's the Titanic myth. Do you know what the Titanic myth is? The Titanic myth is that we can segment in our life and still stay afloat. Up until the Titanic, all the ships that were built had one hull. So if there was a hole put in the hull, water would go in and sink the ship. But then the Titanic came along, and they designed it differently. They segmented the hull into different compartments. And that's why the Titanic was deemed unsinkable, because if something hit it and put a hole in it, they could batten down the hatches, seal that one segment, and keep the Titanic afloat. But we all know what happened to the Titanic, right? It still sunk. And what we do is we think we can have this one segment of our life where we do things and we say things in one way, and then over here, we're a completely different person. And we think if we can just keep that segmented or apart, then we can make it. But listen, it doesn't work. It will always sink our ship. It'll always sink our ship. And the only way that we can really fight the battle of integrity and be whole is that we have to care more about what God thinks than what people think. I want to share a story about a test of integrity that I faced recently that I failed. I failed and then I passed. So I was up at Starbucks. I know I'm up there way too much. I'm up there a lot. And I was backing out of my parking spot. And I noticed the silver Audi next to me, or Audi next to me, it moved a little bit. 
And I thought to myself, oh no, my front bumper, which is all steel, might have caught the back of the silver Audi. And have you ever thought that maybe you caused damage and you just didn't want to look? <laughs> you know, that was me. I think even with our physical body, if you hit your finger with a hammer or you scuff your knee, a lot of times what do we do? We cover it up immediately, right? And we almost don't want to look because we're hoping nothing is really wrong, right? Well, that was me. I didn't want to look. I didn't want to see if I actually had caused any damage. Because if I didn't look, then I didn't have to deal with it, and I could just drive off. And that's what I did. I drove off, and I went to the first stoplight. And when I got there, God said, Dan, you need to go back and look at that car. I said, God, no, I think it's fine. If I did scratch it, it's probably minimal. I drive through that light after it turns green. I come down to the next stoplight. And God says a little stronger in my spirit, Dan, you need to go back to that parking lot and look at that car. And there's this battle rage. I'm like, no, God, I really don't want to go back. I kept driving after that light turned green. And God just kept speaking to me. And I said, you know what? I care more, God, about what you think than what people think. So I turned around. I drove back up to the parking lot got right back next to the car, and I looked at it. And I had created more damage than I thought. I'd actually put a dent in it. My bumper, again, is all steel. It had scraped a bunch of paint off. And you know what my first thought was? I'll just be honest. They probably have insurance. Are there any cameras around? I'm almost embarrassed to admit it, but I'm just being very open. Those were my thoughts. Why were those my thoughts? Because there's a devil and the devil wants us to lose the battle when it comes to integrity. So when something happens in a compartment where you could just kind of walk away and maybe no one's going to know, the devil is going to come in and say, listen, listen, just take the crooked path. Just, just go on the crooked path and go around the bend and hide behind the bend because no one will know, no one will see. It's obvious no one saw what you did. You can just leave and go. Don't have integrity. But listen, I really do love God. And I really do, in my heart, I want to do the right thing. And I'm sure you do too. And so what I did was I got out of my car and I started going up to people outside of Starbucks and asking them if they own the silver alley. And sure enough, I got to one person, a young girl, and she said she owned it. I told her what I had done. And her face went, oh no, right? And so we go to the car we exchange numbers, we call the police, the police come, we file the report, we call the insurance company, all of those things. And after that was all said and done, I was so glad that God loved me enough to say, Dan, go back and look at that car. And Dan, be strong enough to do the right thing. Because God is more concerned about our heart and our integrity and our wholeness than anything. God isn't worried about image and appearance and what people think. God wants us to have the peace and the safety of walking through this life with integrity. Because anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. And now, because I listened to God and I chose integrity, I don't ever have to worry about getting caught. I don't have to worry about a camera catching me. But I'll tell you this, the devil doesn't want you to do what's right. The devil doesn't want me to do what's right. And he will be in our ear for the rest of our lives when it comes to this battle of integrity. But here is the main idea that I want you to walk away with today to be truthful with your whole life, your whole life, because God cares about your heart and God wants your heart to be whole and God wants you to walk through this life safely. He wants you to be like Daniel who had a chance to say, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and eat that food. It's no big deal. But he said, no, I don't wanna dishonor God. I wanna honor God. And because Daniel honored God, God honored him. Now, some of you have heard the wrong message this morning. 
Some of you have heard that integrity means you're perfect, that you never mess up. Listen, I've messed up. I messed up plenty of times. I'm sure I'll probably mess up again. <laughs> integrity isn't about being perfect. It, it, it's, it's, it's about having a heart for God and allowing God to grow you in this area and identify areas where you may be being someone than who you really are, a child of God that is called to wholeness, okay? Next week, next week, I hope you tune back in. I hope you come back because I'm gonna talk to you more about this whole idea of, well, does integrity mean perfection? No, but listen next week and I'll help you more with that. So as we wrap up today, I want us just to think about a few questions. And the first one is this, where do I struggle most with integrity? Is it at school? Is it at home? Is it at church? Is it at work? Is it in your private life? Is it in your sex life? What area, what, what, what area of life do you struggle with integrity the most? Just, just let God speak to you about it right now. Let him identify that for you. Number two, how can Daniel's example help me live with integrity? Maybe it's the area of finances and money. You know, Daniel had courage. Maybe, maybe God's gonna call you to have courage in that area of finance, to live with integrity, to live with, with, with truth, you know? Just, just, just think about how his example can help you live with integrity. And then last, number three, how would being truthful with my whole life help me? Just imagine what kind of world we would have if every politician, all right, every politician always, you know, always just said what was truthful and did what was truthful. Imagine what kind of world we would live in if, if every citizen and every police officer, you know, said what was truthful and did what was truthful. Imagine if every physician and patient just said what was truthful and did what was truthful. Imagine if every lawyer and judge said what was truthful and did what was truthful. Imagine if every Christian, every follower of Christ would just say what was truthful and did what was truthful. What kind of world would we live in? Imagine that. Wouldn't it be a great world to live in? Wow, that is the value of living with integrity. And that is something that God desires for all of us to experience together, for us to be whole. So let me pray for us this week, okay? Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you so much for Daniel and the example of integrity that he had and how you blessed him with understanding and knowledge and, and safety and, and you just used him in a mighty way for your kingdom. And God, I, I pray that, that as we think about integrity, you would help us to maybe identify that, that, that place that we've segmented, we've compartmentalized and, and just bring that to the forefront and, and to our attention and help us to live with integrity in that area, to really be the same person there that we are other places. And God, just help us to think about Daniel this week and remember that as a young man, he just stood for you. And may that give us courage to stand for you when the devil is just in our ear and at us to make a choice to go down that crooked path. And, and God, just, I, I pray that, that you would really, really help us this, this week just to think about the value of living with integrity and how we could be whole. And God, we just pray that you would forgive us for our sins, that you would forgive us for our shortcomings. And God, that you would help us to make some choices this week to do and to say what is truthful, to live with integrity and experience the wholeness that comes from that. God, again, we thank you for allowing us to gather around your word and, and to learn from it and for it to transform and change us. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray, amen. Well, hey, I hope you tune in next week as we continue this series on integrity. God bless you. You have a great day. Thanks for watching. If this message was helpful to you, please share it. And don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to join us in person, visit cantonazarene.com for times and locations.